David Goggins once said, self-discipline is everything. If you don't have it, I don't look at you, right? Because I know that you're capable of so much more. These are words from a triathlete, an ultra marathoner, an ultra triathlete, and a retired Navy SEAL. He is also the only person in the world to have completed all three of Navy SEAL training, Army Ranger School, and Air Force Air Tactical Controller training. He is often referred to as the toughest person in the planet. Now, what is the secret behind his success? The truth is, it's not some golden scroll of knowledge, but rather, it's a shift in perspective, a determination to rise above the limitations that we have imposed on ourselves, and to break free from the chains of comfort and complacency. I pose the question to you all, are we willing to take on this challenge to truly unlock our full potential? Good afternoon, my name is Ryan Wong from Grade 9 here at Sinar Muswad Academy, and today I'm going to be talking about self-discipline and discomfort. In middle school, I was notorious for being a chronic procrastinator. Let me give you a peek into my middle school life. After arriving back home from school, I would first spend around an hour or so scrolling on social media, like YouTube, checking up on the latest trends, like the world's funniest engineering fails, the most useless mega projects in the world, or the most useless video in the world, or the 10 most strangest things ever found on Google Maps. Keep in mind, this was like 2019 or so. And then I'll move on to the main activity of my day, which was actively avoiding my homework. So this involved me staring blankly at my textbook for a good half an hour, then getting a snack break to really get those creative juices flowing because, you know, a full stomach is essential for peak procrastination performance. Then I would tell myself I had to work on my assignments, but a barrier of hundreds of files and networks of folders was standing in between my way. And you can guess what I did for the next hour. I reorganized hundreds of files into networks of folders, all the while pretending I was being productive. Inevitably, deadlines were looming, and I was still sitting in front of my newly reorganized laptop without a clue what to do next. Now, I'm sure you master detectives have figured out some flaws in this system. Turns out my expertly crafted schedule for procrastination wasn't so expertly crafted after all. It seems that I fell victim to a classic case of overstimulation. Now, let me tell you, overstimulation and procrastination make quite the dynamic duo. They're just like Batman and Robin, except instead of fighting crime, they're just really good at wasting time. A lot of people have this difficulty trying to focus on anything challenging or important or mundane. These people are the same people who experience difficulties trying to break out of a social media loop where you're just constantly switching between short form entertainment videos and different social media pages, kind of waiting for something interesting to happen. These people are waiting to be entertained. This is a simple yet complex case of overstimulation. So hundreds of thousands of years ago, our ancestors evolved to survive on these vast, grassy plains, all the while being on the lookout for predators and prey. Our brain then would have been absolutely excited, we stimulated, would be thrilled to see hordes of wildebeest roaming the savanna or a bright red apple hanging from a low-lying tree branch, because then it was necessary for our survival. But now, with the advent of modern technology, economies of scale, I'm sure that there is no need for any one of us here to go hunting for wildebeest or to go picking apples. Instead, now, we're being bombarded by sky-high levels of the same excitement our ancestors felt, the same thrill our ancestors felt, sky-high levels of the same stimulation our ancestors felt, which is called artificial supernormal stimuli. This is most often found in you guessed it, social media. So these, so these large social media companies, they hire these people called attention engineers who try to make their product, their social media platform, as addictive as possible. 
When we are scrolling on social media, we're constantly exposed to the artificial stimuli, and this triggers the release of our pleasure-inducing chemical in our brains called dopamine, which I'm sure a lot of you here are familiar with, leading to an addiction. These social media companies trap our time, and then, which, then they wrap up our data into a gift box for advertisers. Have you realized that it is, in fact, impossible to not click on an Instagram notification? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The red dot with, against the white background. The white heart with the red dot on the top right corner of your screen. The temptation to check, to check on our likes, to check on our followers. The temptation to click and check is so strong that I sometimes feel like the choice to click has already been made for us. Additionally, refreshing our notifications on our mobile phones have become second nature to us. Have you realized how the simple act of refreshing our notifications, scrolling down from the top of the screen to the bottom of our screen, can bring about a rush of excitement, of anticipation? In fact, refreshing our notifications, the motion of refreshing our notifications, it's quite similar to the motion of pulling down a lever in a slot machine in a casino, hoping for a winning combination. Now, I know this might seem a bit far-fetched, but in fact, the similarities don't end there. Both refreshing our notifications and pulling down a slot on a slot machine both involve an element of a chance. The chance for instant gratification. It is what is hiding behind that notification or the spinning reels of a slot machine is what keeps us hooked, is what keeps us coming back for more. Instant gratification is a powerful force that social media companies have become experts at delivering. This constant stream of likes comments, and notifications provide a never-ending stream of rewards, each one giving us that little hit of dopamine, that little hit of pleasure that keeps us coming back for more. There is millions, if not billions, of posts and of content. One second on Instagram, we're admiring a photo of ourselves with our family. Then the next, we're looking at the lives of a wealthy individual. Then the next, a pointless comedy video, and so on and so on. And, and until we realize that we're constantly switching from one thing to the next, to the next, and to the next, never fully giving our attention to one single thing. This trains our brain to be able to hold our attention, our focus on one single thing for 30 seconds or maybe even less. Our ability to focus has been so shortened that it completely destroys the rest of our life, the life where the supposed rest of our life, the life where we're not on social media. So we want what we want, and we want it now. Yet, it is crucial for us to step back and evaluate the role that artificial stimuli plays in our life. These social media companies and these video games are made to be highly addictive, constantly triggering the release of dopamine in our brains. But by reducing our time spent on these platforms, we can rediscover the joys of simple pleasures and human connection. You may find that you look forward to having a simple conversation with friends and family, or immersing yourself into a meaningful book, or simply enjoying a moment of peace and quiet. These activities not only provide a healthier form of stimulation, but they provide a deeper sense of fulfillment and peace. I urge you to consider the impact of artificial stimuli in your life and strive for a healthier balance of stimulation and peace. By leaving out less room, by getting rid and getting out of the cycle of overstimulation, we leave less room for destructive comfort in our lives. 900 years ago, Genghis Khan said, comfort is the killer of man. 900 years later, this could not be more applicable in our society today. Most of us spend our lives building up walls between us and discomfort. Our minds, our brains are programmed to say no when we feel the slightest bit uncomfortable. And this builds up a dependence. Comfort, or the easy way, builds up a dependence. Comfort breeds softness. And most of all, comfort breeds fear. We've become addicted to our easy way, and now we've become afraid of losing it. 
the human body. I believe it was designed to move, to hunt, to flee, to really be pushed and tested. Our ancestors were up and about on the break of dawn, hunting and farming. Yet somewhere along the way, comfort became the key to happiness, right? Big fancy homes, luxury cars with heated seats. Yet these things, these materialistic things, never seem to make us truly happy. And in the process of seeking comfort, we've softened both mentally and physically. When did we lose our way? Comfort can only bring a temporary satisfaction and limited growth into our lives. To truly achieve greatness, to truly achieve independence, we must push ourselves out of our comfort zone and actively seek out discomfort over comfort. This allows us to be more resilient and allows us to get rid of our creature comforts. Our comfort zone is an ideological place where we have everything under control and getting out of this ideologically safe space. We're met with adversity. We're met with uncertainty. And all of these make us fearful. But it's simple, really. Somewhere along the way, life will have some serious obstacle in store for us. Will we stick to our comfort zone, stick to our creature comforts, and dread this, or just be ready? Escape the comfort zone because there is no way to grow if we stay inside of it. Now, I challenge you to seek out discomfort and allow it to shape you into a stronger and more resilient individual. Let me show you some actionable steps to embrace discomfort. Firstly, take some risks and try. This may sound simple, but you know, Albert Einstein once said, a ship is safe at shore. That was not what it was meant for. We humans, we have an innate fear of rejection. And this fear of rejection is sometimes so strong that it leads us to even not consider the possibility to try. And more often than not, we fail not because we are rejected, but because we don't try. We have to get out of our comfort zone, get out of that mentality, and we have to try because we miss 100% of the shots that we don't take. We fail in everything that we don't try in. Secondly, our generation, Gen Z, commonly referred to as, is rife with FOMO. FOMO stands for the fear of missing out. The societal pressure drives us to attend every single gathering with our friends, every single get-together, every single party. And in the pursuit of constantly being in this social loop, we have forgotten, we have lost track of our long-term goals and ambitions. We have to recognize that not every single experience will lead to personal growth. Hang out with friends, then catching a movie will not be equal to you making progress in your personal goals. We have to realize that time is our most valuable resource. Time is something we can't buy back. All the riches in the world cannot buy back an extra second of time to live. When we kill time, we are killing ourselves. We have to learn how to properly use time or it will use us up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true that comfort has become the norm in our society today. And we have forgotten what it means to push ourselves beyond our limits mentally and physically. Yet, in this world where instant gratification is readily available at our fingertips, it is crucial for us to recognize the importance of self-discipline and discomfort. We are at a crossroads. On one end of the path lies a life of ease, of softness, free from unhappiness, fear, or pain. The other path is a less traveled path, and it's a path full of sacrifice, full of hardships, full of discomfort. Yet this is the path that we truly learn from, that we truly grow from. This is the crossroads. We choose between self-indulgence and self-discipline. We choose between vice and virtue. You have the opportunity right in front of your eyes. Would you take it or leave it? What will it be? Greatness or ruin? Dependence or independence? Would you change your life or remain in ignorance? Discomfort and self-discipline 
are what builds your mind and decides your destiny. Thank you.